Hello, and welcome to Pax Natura, the online teaching forum that seeks to explore what we can learn from the ancient Greeks and Romans to help with environmental sustainability issues for our age. Today, we're going to make a, a floral garland to celebrate Veterans Day, also known as Poppy Day, which is on the 11th of November. This garland is inspired by the Roman military practice of hanging greenery from the weapons, such as javelins and spears, to celebrate a victory. To begin, I will provide a bit of history to explain the practice and symbolism of the greenery that the Romans used. Then I will say something about the use of the red poppy to honor soldiers who fought and died in battles from the World War I to the present. After this, I will show you how to make the garland. Then I will give you some ideas about ways you can display it, and I hope that you enjoy making this. And now we will begin with some background information. For Veterans Day, I want to make a garland of flowers that is both a symbol of remembrance and one that is a hope for a more peaceful world. My idea comes from the first century Roman writer Pliny the Elder, who said that Roman soldiers hung garlands of laurel leaves from their spears and javelins after a military victory. However, Pliny also points out that laurel and olive became symbols of peace in the ancient world. The idea to use the red poppy to honor soldiers and recall the horrors of war came about in the 1920s, just after World War I. It is based on a poem called In Flanders Fields by John McCrae, who was a Canadian field surgeon, and saw poppies growing on the battlefields in Belgium. People are also beginning to use white flowers in the hope for a peaceful world and an end to war. Today we're going to make a long strand of flowers. The other um, tools I'll need are my scissors, again raffia, and enough pieces of raffia that we'll use to um, tie the flowers on. So the flowers and greeneries I'm, uh, greenery I'm using are all grown lo fairly locally in California, so it's not too far away. I am using um, carnations. I couldn't get poppies, but I'm using um, Gerber daisies with black centers to, to simulate poppies. The greenery I'm using is eucalyptus because it represents, it's similar to the color of an olive tree because I couldn't get olive. And I also couldn't get bay, but I'm just using greenery that looks similar to, um, to bay leaves. So just to get the color and the similarity. I'm also putting in white flowers to represent a piece. Okay, so I'm just using white carnations, again, local to the area, to try and make it as sustainable as possible. Okay, this is very easy to make, and it shouldn't take time, much time. It's just a matter of weaving. The first thing we need to do is take our long strand of, so we have our long strand, of raffia, you can use string as you, if you like, anything, but this is biodegradable. Then we just take another strand of raffia, and we t we're going to need to use this second strand to wrap it around the flowers to weave them in and hold them on to our garland. Then we just need to make a loop. You can tie this however you like. The next thing you need to do is tie on the other piece of raffia, because this is what we will wrap around. Our flowers. So basically you have a piece that's going perpendicular. Okay, and now the fun bit. Lay this flat, like this. You will see there's a little bit of space between the loop and this raffia. We'll need that for our flowers. And then I'm going to start off putting a piece of greenery. You can do this in any order you like, but I'm just going to, to do this. And then I take this and wrap it around the stem two or three times. And then pull it through with your finger. It'll be long at first and loop it, okay? 
Then, because this is a garland and you want flowers on all sides, I'm going to flip it over. And I think this time I'll add a little white. Again, laying it flat, take that off. So it's just slightly below. Wrap, surround twice. Then I'm going to turn it on its side. In this case, I'll add some more white because I have a lot of that. This one, I'll get a fuller one. And just slightly below and wrap it around again twice. And then we're back to the front. And in this case, I might want to add a red carnation. And what we'll see is this covers up all the raffia in the center by just keeping around. This time I'm going to wrap it twice and then pull it, make a knot. So every so often you make a knot. And you just keep turning it so every quarter. And you will see that it doesn't look nice at all when it's not covered up. But each time we turn it, we will be covering up the raffia that's holding the um, the flowers on. Okay. Also, keep your stems a little long. This will mean it stays on quite well. Okay, so I've done one green, two whites, and a red. And I think I'll try and continue with the pattern, but this time I'm going to use some eucalyptus. And that covers up. So turn that again. Then we have another white flower. Wrap it around where the red is. Put it I just slowly work my way down. Now I'm coming to the end. of this raffia, it's breaking anyway. So what you do is you just continue. You'll get another piece of raffia. You'll cut this, get another piece of raffia, tie it on to your string, always the base of the string, and just continue to work around like that. So we have a pretty nice garland that's beginning to build up. Okay, And then this can be on all sides. I also want to add one of these. So you want these to be quite prominent. So we'll have that on the f well, I'll work it down a little bit and added a few more of these. So I'm going to carry on doing this and then it will come back and show you towards the end. So now it's time to start completing. And as you can see, I've made quite a, a nice little garland now. This could go on and on, and I'm not going to make a very long garland, though I do make long ones at Christmas. But you can see that it sags a little, which is nice if I'd like that. I should be able to wrap it around something, which I'll show you in a minute how I've done that. But this is a short one. You can and you could just use it as a tabletop as well, as a tabletop decoration. But how to complete these? As you can see, I'm coming close to it, and there are a few bits that I'd like to cover up of, of raffia that's been wrapped around. And I'm just going to finish off with some greenery here. And then but uh, first, just maybe I'll put in one more flower. That, just to make it a bit smaller. And then I start, yeah. I want everything equal on this last side, so I'm not going to be going down. So just equally around. Try that. This is the way we just cover up a lot of the excess raffia above the flowers. Maybe one more bit of greenery. Okay. And always ensure, always constantly check that your long bit is still hanging straight. 
sometimes I actually tie like a um, something to it so I know which is the, the piece to keep straight. Like you could tie a bead. Now what I'm doing is I'm just wrapping around very tightly for a little bit. Okay. All right. And then I'm going to tie it in a few knots. So the way I tie the knot is I grab my finger, I bring the rope, ar the string around or the raffia around once again, and then I tie it through the loop, and I pull very tightly. You could also um, cover this up with some nice colored ribbon if you'd like. So again, just to show you, take a finger like that go around the stems and the string so it comes over, pull it through, and again. So just one more time. So I see the loop here, pull through, there it's that. And now I just cut off any excess. So carefully, little by little. Do not cut this. That's why I said carefully. That. And that. I still have a little bit left. So if I wanted to keep tying to just cover up the bottoms of the stems so we don't see those. And then finish off. Just tie it in knot. So there we have a nice little garland. Okay, and then here I've wrapped it around, well, it's a lamp, um, a standing lamp. But to give you an idea, you can wrap it around a post. So it looks something like this. The tighter you do it, we just have it hanging from a post, straight like that. Uh, so this gives you, it's very windy outside, which is why I'm not outside. You can also drape it, as I have here, with some hooks. So you can see how it hangs up, like this. So finally, if you like a little bling, you can add some lights around it, battery-operated lights. Um, and also try to reuse use reusable batteries, because again, they're more sustainable. And so there you have some examples of different ways you can use this Roman-inspired Veterans Day um, Veterans Day Garland. Okay, I would just like to say thank you again for watching. Please keep an eye out on my website because I will start to be selling some products soon, probably towards the middle of the month. And then um, I would also like to thank you again and to say like, please like, share, and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I look forward to seeing you with a Thanksgiving ornament in the next two weeks.